Hey mommy, it's Ashley here from Glow Body Personal Training and I am so excited to share with you I had a baby girl. We let the gender of this baby number three be a surprise and I was in shock when she came out and it was a, a girl and I was just overflowing with emotion which was just pouring out of the innermost parts of me because I have wanted a little girl my whole life and as much as I love Gavin and Riker, this is just the perfect addition to our family. So she was born at 7 pounds, 10 ounces. Born standing up, she came out hand first, um, not even pushing, just during a really long contraction as I was just leaning over the hospital bed and I screamed, she's coming! And the nurses came over, literally shoved Luke out of the way, got down on their knees and grabbed her just in time. So it was messy, it was emotional, it was incredible. And I'm just so grateful to have Ava. She's so much smaller than Riker. Riker was about nine and a half pounds. So I expected another giant baby, but Ava was only seven pounds, 10 ounces. So I know you guys remember what my belly looked like just a week ago. It was enormous, and when Gavin came and visited me in the hospital, he said, Mom, I thought your, I thought our baby would be bigger because your belly was so big. And um, yeah, he just said exactly what we're all thinking, so thank you, Gavin, for being so real with me. So today what we're going to cover is um, we're going to talk about breastfeeding, belly binding, exercise, what you can do before the six-week postpartum, five to six-week postpartum checkup if you delivered vaginally or maybe eight to nine weeks if you delivered via C-section. What you can do before then, a little bit of nutrition, and then just a couple of things that I have had this time around for this pregnancy, number three, totally not sponsored anything, that have been really helpful for me that I wish somebody told me about during, um, at postpartum, my first two babies. So we are breastfeeding. I breastfed both of my first two babies, and Ava is being breastfed to no issues so far. She did come out with a little bit of a tongue tie, but it wasn't severe enough for the doctor to determine that we should cut it. Now, if I do run into problems later on, that's something I'll know to bring up to a lactation consultant, and bring up to my doctor, let them know like, hey, the tongue tie is kind of causing pain on my nipples, or it's just I can notice that Ava is having trouble nursing. So that's something that is really common in babies, and tongue tie is one of um, the most common issues that moms have struggle with for nursing. So if you do need to get your babies um, just that little bit of skin underneath their tongue snipped, don't feel bad, bad about it at all. It is very common and I just want to throw that out there in case any of you are, are dealing with that right now. I wake her up um, every three hours during the day if she doesn't wake up on her own to make sure that she nurses and to make sure that we are already establishing the difference between daytime versus nighttime. So because she's a healthy weight, I will not wake the baby up while she's sleeping. I just let her sleep. And um, But during the day, I'll definitely wake her up to make sure that she knows it's morning time, time to be awake. If she's having trouble waking up, changing her diaper usually does the trick to get her a little bit, a little irritated, a little angry, and ready to go right on the boob. So breastfeeding is going well so far. It's something that is definitely compatible with my 12-week post-pregnancy plan. Um, I recommend breastfeeding up to a year if it's something that you can do and is working with you and your schedule. I know if you're working full time that makes it really really difficult to be pumping at work and freezing and doing bottles but if that's something that um, that you do want to do what I recommend is up to a year or longer. Riker ended up nursing for about 14 to 16 months even though I tried to wean him so that is what a, my goal is with Ava is up to a year if we don't make it we only go to 10 months or 11 months, and um, that's it. Well, so be it. No guilt attached, but that's what I'm going for. The next thing I want to talk about is belly binding. So I'm not wearing it right now. I took it off about 15 minutes ago, so you're still going to see the lines on my stomach because this baby makes some good um, indentations. It's super long. You know, it's like a giant mess. My husband's like, this literally goes from one distance from our house to the other wall. And um, I'm just going to show you how I start it real quick. I take it throw it over my shoulder, and I use my chin as a stabilizer. Looking into the mirror is the best thing to do, and you want to start really low. This is why I like Ben Kong belly binding over other belly binders, so I can start low, and I can control um, how tight I make it. So I want to center it right along the abdominal um, separation in your abs, step around, and then this part here will just go over, and then under, and you pull it up. So that's it just lynching it through and then I tighten it up as best I can. Again, I'll put it over my shoulder, put my chin down and hold it in place, spread it out so that you're not just having a little 
knobby piece of fabric and that you really spread it out wide, pull it tight, and again, you can go over, under, and then put it under your chin again. Now, I'm not going to show you the whole thing, but I'll show you um, what it looks like when I'm done. I really try to keep my binding low. I have a long torso, so starting, starting right down here is key for me, right at the hip bones, and then I want to finish it before the ribs because there's nothing more uncomfortable than having a binding cover in your ribs because then you feel like your lungs don't have the space to expand and contract like they should and you can't really breathe. You're like, Ashley, you're crazy. That is way too much work. <laughs> um, then I simply get the um, my three-piece binder. It's another one of my favorites because it's worked so well with so many women that I've worked with individually, one-on-one, -on -one postpartum, as far as healing their abs um, and pulling their stomach back in, reducing all of the fluids, all of the blood that needs to flush out and just literally pressing it up out of their body as it helps your uterus return back to size. So postpartum, your uterus is like way up here, and then over the course of about a week, it's traveling. Mine's about right here right now, and it's going to continue to shrink. Wearing a binding is going to help it continue to get smaller. You can just get a three-piece set, though, um, on Amazon. I'll link my favorite one below, the one that I trust the most, that I've seen the most success with. Um, with women I've worked with one-on-one, -on -one, so that if you want to do something simpler than bed and kung belly binding, you can just get the three-piece, and it's three pieces over time, so you don't do all three pieces at once. You do it um, progressively over time, so that would be the second best option if you just don't want to deal with bed and kung belly binding. I think this is beautiful. I wear it out in public, wore it to church today, and um, I don't feel ashamed about it. I just feel like, hey, I'm a postpartum mom. This is what's working for me. I love the colors, and it's fun, and... Um, I just know I'm doing good things for my body, so I don't feel embarrassed or ashamed about wearing it in public at all. And i um, wearing it for eight hours a day, so I try to put it on right after breakfast, wear it for about eight hours and take it off. So belly binding is only successful and only worth your time, effort, or money if you do it between day two and day 40 postpartum. After day 40, you're more likely doing yourself a more of a disservice than helping your abs because it provides a little bit of a crutch. So yes, it helps pull your internal organs back in, helps cinch your waist and get everything back where it should be, but it also gives you a little bit of structure and we don't want too much structure um, after 40 days postpartum because we want your whole abdominal wall, your transverse abdominis engaging themselves in order to increase your posture, make yourself um, upright and not be relying on a crutch such as a binding in order to get in that nice perfect posture position. So do it up front. Don't start wearing a belly binder at four months past, five months, six months postpartum. That's really just um, going to weaken your abs rather than make them stronger. At that point, you need to be on the 12-week post-pregnancy plan where we strengthen your abs with deliberate exercises over time to close your ab gap, cinch the waist, um, heal your pelvic floor, and just restore your entire core as we tone up all over and a belly binder will not add tone to your belly, no matter what. So that's it about belly binders. Next thing is exercise. This takes a lot of restraint for me, but I'm not going to exercise until I have an exactly it's five week postpartum checkup. Usually it's four to six weeks. Mine's smack dab in the middle. It's a five week postpartum. I had a natural delivery, just a one degree tear that did not require stitching. So it's pretty, pretty flawless, um, low risk pregnancy and everything. So at five weeks, the, the doctor will examine me and she'll tell me whether I'm ready to resume exercise or if we have another issue going on and I need a little bit more time. So just yesterday, so day six postpartum, I allowed myself to go on a walk finally because I'm the type that's going to overdo it. So I was like, no walking at all, Ashley. You know, you can go around the block with baby to check the mail, you know, in my ring sling, but I would not go for a walk because I didn't want to just um, feel that need to exercise already because my body really just needed me need to rest hard so that my uterus can go back down to size where it needs to be. My pelvic floor can start repairing itself. My perineum, that skin had tore a little bit, that that can start repairing itself as well. As well. My body didn't need exercise, still doesn't need exercise. It just needs rest. Now, the only reason I started walking is because I need it for my mental health and sanity. Like, it feels good to get out with baby Eva and push her in the stroller. So we walked around the track. We did about um, 10 laps. That's about two and a half miles. And it just felt good. It felt good to get out and be active because that's 
part of who I am, and likely if you're watching Go Body BT and you're part of the Go Body BT fam, that's part of who you are too, mommy. So, in the 12-week post-pregnancy plan, I recommend during your recovery stage, this is the season of resting hard. A lot of times we work hard as moms and women. This is like the one season in life where you must rest hard. But during this rest hard season, I do recommend progressive walking so that you can just feel like yourself, just jumpstarting your metabolism a little bit in a healthy way and um, work your body up to that five or six week or eight week appointment when you do get the go. So we start progressive walking um, about six days postpartum. You can start between six and 10, maybe wait a little bit longer if you had a C-section or any serious complications, but you'll know when your body is ready to start walking. It's one of the safest things you can do postpartum. In addition to walking, I'm also doing deliberate Kegels three times per day. I always do them while I'm nursing because, well, I'm stuck there sitting there anyway. So whether you're bottle feeding your baby or nursing, I recommend doing it um, both in the seated position with legs together, with legs in a natural stance apart, and then also when you're sidelined. So sideline nursing is one of my favorite positions where baby's just in that football position. Your lines at the side and your legs are together. And that's one of the best ways to be able to feel your pelvic floor activating for the first time postpartum. So just to check your own pelvic floor, you can get on the floor like this. Um, just use your finger, place it right here, just a couple fingers. You can do it with pants on and you can feel any, t you wanna feel tightening of your vagina as if you're pulling a tampon in and out. That's what I want you to focus on. Now it's going to be really hard at first to um, be able to reconnect with those muscles, so give it some time. If you really can't feel them, give a little cough, and you'll be able to feel what's going on down there. It's also the same muscles that you use to stop yourself from peeing if you needed to stop midstream. I don't recommend doing that, it can cause a UTI, but that's how you know that you are engaging the correct muscles. Now mentally, I do a couple things that help me stay focused. Picture your pelvic floor as a hammock, okay? So from the front of your, your vaginal wall area all the way back to the anus, it's like this hanging hammock, okay? And I want you to picture just pulling that up and in and then also connecting it to your belly button. So if you had a string tied to your belly button from the bottom of your vagina, pulling those two things together that is one of the first things that I focus on as I'm doing my Kegels. Now you'll see no movement, but you can, you can really think about pulling that belly button in and pulling them together, strings are coming together. Another thing I like to think about since, again, the pelvic floor is like a hammock, I like to picture um, my belly button being pulled towards my anus as if you're, you're reeling in a, um, a fishing pole, like reeling in that fishing wire and you're just pulling together, so tailbone, is coming up towards your belly button, that is going to activate your transverse abdominis as well. So we're kind of crisscrossing. We're going from down here to the belly button, belly button to back here, making an X. And I'll, I'll do a set of maybe five repetitions, trying to hold it for three seconds, just picturing pulling a tampon in and up, holding it one, two, three, and then completely relaxing. And then same thing, I'll think about pulling um, my tailbone or anus towards my belly button, coming together, count one, two, three, you're breathing throughout, and then complete, completely relax. These are super safe exercises that you can start as soon as you have your baby, getting you connected with your innermost abdominal muscles so that we can start healing your abs and pulling them back together because it's all connected to your pelvic floor. And this is key for what we'll be doing with your exercises on the 12 week post pregnancy plan as we really cinch the waist and pull your abs back together. But you have to be connected with your pelvic floor muscles. And those are just a couple of visualizations that, um, that help me and maybe can help you too. Um, you can do what I call stop. Stop and give me six. So every time I get to a stoplight, I try to do six Kegels. So I'll just pull in, release, pull in, release. And these are my faster Kegels. So it's important to do your, your faster Kegels and then also your slower Kegels. What I described is those three seconds slower Kegels. Eventually over time, you want to extend that to be five seconds and then all the way to 10 seconds long. I'm about at the level of three seconds right now. I can't hold mine very long yet but I'm just a week postpartum, so my goal though is to work up to five second long, where I'm sure I'm contracting for five seconds, and then releasing, and then all the way up to 10 seconds, and that's where you're going to be at max healthy pelvic floor um, capabilities down there to prevent bladder leaks, and um, or stress incontinence, which is like when we 
you know, you pee a little bit when you sneeze or cough. And I'm struggling with that right now, and I know I just need to keep working on it. 50 to 75% of women do postpartum, so if you are as well, it's totally normal. It's just from the intense pressure of birthing a baby um, that you're having that stress incontinence. So keep working on those. They are key to restoring your healthy pelvic floor. Um, and then exercise, we'll be doing all the right exercises in the post-pregnancy plan to also be lengthening that pelvic floor, which is just as key because you don't want to just tighten the hammock. You also want to strengthen it and lengthen it as well. And the next part is um, supplements. I take plus sense of pills. I do 50% raw and 50% um, steamed. There are mixed opinions out there about consuming your placenta, but because it has worked for me during my first and second postpartum recovery, I decided why not keep doing what's working for me. I haven't had any postpartum depression yet, and I think that restoring the levels of iron and D12 and a lot of other vitamins that's in the placenta to my body has helped reduce my chances of getting postpartum depression. Now, it's not a beat all, you know, you can't just take it and ensure that you won't get postpartum depression. But it's worked for me, so it's something that I'm doing and would continue to do if I have kids in the future. As far as nutrition, I'm not trying to consume any extra calories to provide for nursing because I'm still, um, I'm going to talk numbers, so if numbers trigger you, then just fast forward a bit. Um, I gain between 30 and 35 pounds, I would say closer to 35 pounds based on the hospital scale. And now I'm between 8 and 9 pounds above my pre-pregnancy weight, which is my ideal weight, and that's 135. So um, I was about 143, 144 this morning, so I still have that far to go. And um, I want to continue to lose that weight over time. I have plenty of time to do so in no rush whatsoever not restricting calories at all, but I am putting a big focus on just eating clean because I want those nutrients to help me recover faster. Not because I'm really trying to lose weight fast, it's because I want my diet super rich in nutrients and high in vegetables and lean proteins and fruits and just naturally occurring vitamins, um, nuts, seeds, different types of grains so that I can ensure my body is getting everything it needs to restore itself as fast as possible on its own. But I'm also following nutrition goal one in the 12 week post pregnancy plan, and that is no sugary drinks. So I'm avoiding things like, like juice or Gatorade or fruit punch or hot chocolate, no alcohol, and really just sticking to water and tea, and sometimes I'll have milk and that's it, and it's 2% it's two milk, but no creamer, no other sugars added to drinks at all, and also avoiding fake sugar drinks as well because those just cause, cause sugar gravings and are carcinogenic and I just want to avoid them. It's just an easy way to cut out 100 or 200 calories per day to help me in my weight loss goals over time to help lose these last eight or nine pounds um, of baby weight without doing anything drastic or restrictive or stressful. Definitely don't fo believe in following a meal plan postpartum. You already have enough stress on you as a mom who's not getting enough sleep. So no meal plan postpartum, but in the post-pregnancy plan, I do give you four cumulative nutrition goals, meaning you'll do number one, and then you'll add on number two, number three, number four. Each phase, we add a new goal, so that you get about 30 days to adjust to your goal and make it a lifelong habit versus just a quick fix that's going to help you lose a couple pounds. Because once you get down to your, your pre-pregnancy weight, I want you to stay there long term. I don't want you to just gain it back. So we get those 30 days to make it a new habit. Now, the, there's a couple things that I wish I had during my other postpartum recoveries that I wish a girlfriend had told me about, but I just didn't know about. So this time, um, one of my best friends gave me Depends, which are adult women's pull-up underwear disposable, because there's nothing worse than like, shifting around one of those giant long pads at night and hoping that you're not leaking in your bed, and just having this underwear that you can just dispose of in the morning. The next one is a stool softener. If the hospital offers you a stool softener pill, I recommend taking it. I was backed up for a good five days, maybe six days after having my last baby after Riker, and I just couldn't poop. It would just, it hurt too much. My body wasn't um, processing things like it should. The digestive system was messed up, and even though I was consuming a lot of fiber and a lot of water, I just couldn't poop, and it was really uncomfortable. So. Right from the start, when they offered me, offered me a stool softener, I said, yes, please. And they gave me a whole bottle, so I was able to take one or two a day. And within a day, I was on a natural um, flow again. The last one 
is called Swaddle Up. It's like a love to dream um, type of swaddle. I used to swaddle with Eden and anus blankets. I might be mispronouncing those. They're super soft, Muslim, organic cotton. You can wrap your baby in like this, but if you have a baby like mine who's like a Houdini, they can just get their arms out and it's really frustrating at three in the morning when you're trying to unfold this giant square and put it into a triangle and wrap your baby up and like hope they stay in that position. System that has two zippers, one goes up, one goes down, so you can just unzip it up to change diapers or zip it up and it's covered so it won't rub against your, your baby's delicate neck skin. And it keeps them in this little angel-like position, which is so cute. And they tend to like this position because they like to gnaw on their fingers um, just as a way to comfort themselves. So Ava loves that already. All right, this is the awkward part, sharing my belly. I Let's see if I have any lines left. Yep, I still have some lines from the Ben Kang belly binding you kind of see right here. And then the Linea Alba hasn't faded yet. This will definitely fade over time. This is just um, natural pigmentation you get during your pregnancy, just like your areolas get darker. Totally normal, but this will fade as you, um, you know, as the time progresses postpartum. So this is where we're at. Just natural me, standing, no flexing, no sucking in or anything. And this is, um, this is behind how it looks. So, yeah. Get really excited to start the 12 week post pregnancy plan once I get the go at my five week appointment and make some gains from here. So that is it. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I love you guys so much. Thank you for your support during this pregnancy. And I will see you next time. If you haven't already and you're still pregnant, go grab my free prenatal training plan. It takes you week by week through your pregnancy, through each trimester, all the way up to 32 weeks. After 32 weeks, you just follow the third trimester friendly workouts and you are good to go. But it is free and available for you and I hope you love it. I put so much heart and love into it. Or if you have just had your baby or you're about to have your baby, start looking at my 12 week post pregnancy plan because recovery guidance, nutrition goal one, they start right away as soon as baby comes. I love you. See you next time. Bye.